So in this video, I'm going to tackle the very tricky subject of whether or not expensive bike things, bike parts, bike bags are worth it. And also about why some things cost less and some things cost more. To hopefully shed some light on, on pricing and these notions of quality and value in bike gear. On the channel, I've been super fortunate to be able to test a wide variety of bike bags, bikes in general, and also bike accessories. Everything from things that are very affordable to things that are pretty pricey. And I do want to acknowledge that this is a bit of a privileged position to be able to do this and talk about products in this way. But trust me, I do know what it's like to economize. I remember when I first got into cycling and the notion of a $800 bike seemed like a king's ransom. And in those very early years, I bought tons of things used or from the bike co-op. I even built my own wheels to, to save some money. And the thought of ever contemplating buying a custom bike, uh, much less you know a wheel set that costs as much as the frame was completely inconceivable. But as I've gotten older and had more perspective and just to be frank, less time than I was when I was younger, uh, my values and priorities have kind of changed. I've also been making bike content for almost two decades and have gotten to know lots of people in the bike industry. So first off, we have to kind of have a common working language. So I'm gonna define, try to define three terms. So the three words are cost, price, and value. So really high level definitions, costs are all the expenses that it takes to produce a product. And that's things like raw materials, uh, time, shipping and handling, marketing expenses, overhead, so rent if you've got employees, lots of things go into producing a pretty simple product. And there is price, which I think some people get confused with costs. Costs are all the inputs that it requires to create a product and price is the cost plus profit. And I know profit has kind of a, a dirty connotation. When you hear profit, we think big pharma that's making you know thousands of dollars on a $10 uh, pill. But trust me, in the bike industry, the margins are not that great. And lastly, probably the most elusive concept would be that of value. And that is a question of whether or not a product is worth the asking price. This is where things get kind of tricky because value is not the same for everybody. One thing to keep in mind is when we talk about value and worth, it is not the maker or the designer or the product that assigns the value, it's you, the consumer. So very subjective, very nebulous in, in some ways. So I think to illustrate these concepts, um, I'm gonna use this bag as an example. This is the gold back bag by our friends at uh, Bags by Bird. And although I am talking about this particular bag at this moment, you know, this can apply to a bag made by our friends uh, at Reload or Swift Industries. All these concepts apply, but I'm gonna use this particular bag as an example. A little bit of a background. If you're not familiar with Bags by Bird, we did a live stream where he gave us a studio tour. Uh, so things you should know right off the bat. One, this is made by a single person in the United States, individually handmade. So there aren't those uh, benefits of economies of scale. There's no factories or something. This is just a single maker making this in a fairly developed country where living expenses are expensive. The price of the bag is $230. So it is by no means an insignificant sum. So whenever I review a product like this, usually the first comment within, within the first 15 or 20 minutes is, you know, it's overpriced, it's it's exorbitant. You know, I could make that for, for way less money. So we're gonna do that. Well, at least theoretically. So what would it cost me to make <laughs> this bag? Let's say I'm, I wanna save my $230 and I wanna do it myself. Uh, I've been going back and forth with Jay trying to get you know, a, a sense of the costing for a product like this. If you look at this bag, you know, it looks fairly simple, you know, it's just some material and some straps and some buckles and other things, right? So ultimately there are three main fabrics that go into this bag, but beyond just, you know, the, the big materials that you see, there are 30 other pieces that have to come together to form this bag. There are these, there are these snaps, there are these high abrasion zones, there's the thread, there's the needles for the machine, there's these wooden dowels, you know, webbing straps at different thicknesses, there's a liner on the inside, all these other things that I don't know what they're called, but they're on this bag. So this bag, although it's seemingly very simple, uh, has a lot of components to it. For me, as just a regular consumer that wanted to build this myself, uh, not having a wholesale account to the different suppliers, the cost of materials is around $75. 
That's with no wholesale discount. If you're a small business and could buy any quantity in bulk, then you can probably bring your cost down to about $50. So that is just the cost of the raw materials. Of course, I can order all that stuff and it still wouldn't be a bag. Uh, you know, I would need a sewing machine and as someone that has no sewing experience, I also have to take the time to learn how to sew. So I asked Jay, what is the least expensive sewing machine that he uses to assemble this bag? And he uses a industrial walking foot sewing machine uh, that you can get used for $1,000. You could probably attempt it with a lesser sewing machine. You'll be breaking lots of needles, really uh, kind of stressing the machine's motors. You could do it, but it might not be pretty. Or you could, you know, potentially sew it by hand if you're totally trying to economize. So you can see just the cost alone is already adding up. Uh, you know, $75 in raw materials, you know, potentially $1,000 in a sewing machine or hopefully free if we can borrow one from a friend or we get a super cheap one for 175 bucks. I mean, we're, we're already practically at the cost of just buying this new. And that doesn't even account for the time. Like I have no sewing experience. So if I were to teach myself, you know, I foresee like three or four hours of YouTube tutorial videos, and then maybe another 10 or 12 hours of failed attempts and just learning how to use the materials, trying not to stab my thumb. Probably all in to make this bag would take, would cost me 20 hours. As I've gotten older, my time becomes more valuable. Um, you know, those 20 hours could be 20 hours spent making YouTube videos or doing client work. My billable rate for you know video production is about 100 bucks an hour. So if I spent 20 hours working on this bag, not doing video stuff, um, it's a two thousand dollars just in time. So let's say you, you you work a job that pays 15 bucks an hour. You know, multiply that by 20. If you're a slow learner like myself, then you know that's 300 bucks in time, plus the 75 dollars in material plus hopefully being able to borrow a sewing machine. So that is the cost for me as a individual trying to uh, make this exact product from scratch with no experience. So when you consider Jay, the person that makes these bags and his other business expenses, you can see where, you know, $230, yes, is it, it's expensive. It's definitely not free, but you can see a justification for the price because on top of that, there's all sorts of other overhead, uh, you know, a small business owner has to pay. You know, there's rent, uh, there's insurance, there's shipping and handling, there's the time, uh, you know, going back and forth with customers. He offers a custom program with this bag. There's marketing costs like the web designer, the person that designed the logo and all the packaging and a myriad of other small business expenses that you don't necessarily see when you, you know, see the price tag and you see this bag. So that is the cost. And now there is the price, right? Which we defined earlier as cost plus price profit because Jay or any other small business owner has to make a profit. Otherwise they won't be in business and they won't be able to make these bags. I know it's hard to believe, but sometimes people have to make some money to stay in business and looking at all the things that go into something like this, uh, you can get a sense that the margins aren't that huge uh, when you factor in the costs plus profit to make that price. I remember hearing one sage piece of uh, business advice and it was if you want to stay in business it's very simple you just have to charge more than it costs and surprisingly it's really hard to get that sometimes i think when most people complain about the price it's because they're actually thinking about the cost and aren't considering all things that go into producing the bag as well as the necessary profit for the said bag maker bike maker to stay in business the last concept is value and worth is this bag worth the asking price and here's the tricky thing about value and worth. It's not the, the maker that sets the value or worth, it is you, the person buying this product. Value and worth is completely determined by the customer. And it's dependent on so many things, like you know, what you prioritize in the product, in your life, your resources or lack thereof. For me, I value carrying things on my bike. So yes, I don't mind spending a little bit more on you know, bike accessories and bike bags. And I really like this form factor. I'm a bigger fan of the uh, Caradice style saddlebags in general. Yes, I could buy a less expensive painter, but it's not really what I want. Or I could also buy a mass produced bike packing bag, but again, also not what I want. So while yes, there are less expensive alter alternatives, those I value less than a bag like this, which 
fits my needs and requirements for what I want in a bike bag. In addition to just value in terms of functionality, there's all sorts of other things. Do you value things that are made in the US? Then there is an upmarket charge for that. Do you value the innovation of small businesses? Then again, you know, that's another thing that you have to pay for. Do you want to reward you know, the originator of a concept or do you wanna go cheap and just get kind of the knockoff? These are questions that only you can answer for yourself, but you know, I have a set of things that I value and I'm willing to pay for those things. There's also value in terms of how it fits into your life. Uh, for Laura and I, you know, bicycles are super important. It's the only thing that we really spend money on sometimes. So for, for us, you know, stuff like this is definitely worth it. If you're just getting into cycling or cycling is maybe your you know, third or fourth or, or fifth passion, then it doesn't make sense. And that's completely legitimate because you are assigning the value and worth to said product. I think where things get tricky is when there's a product uh, that you can't justify the cost. It's either too expensive or you don't value it enough. And that's completely fine. Doesn't make you a terrible person, but I don't think it gives us license to kind of villainize all these small makers thinking that they're Scrooge McDuck swimming through pools of money because I can assure you many of them are not. So is this expensive bike bag worth it? Is this expensive bike bag worth it? To me, as someone that love cycling, it's their primary passion. You know, we have a business around it, a YouTube channel around it. The answer unequivocally is yes, 100%. That's not to say it's inexpensive. You know, it definitely costs some money. It's not free, maybe higher than average in the, in the spectrum of things. But for me, talking to Jay and other makers that we know and knowing what goes into a small business, not having the buying power to get things super cheap investing all that time in R&D and actually making the product, the price doesn't actually seem as exorbitant uh, as you would first think. Is this bag worth it for you? I mean, that's a question you're gonna have to answer yourself, but I do urge you guys when I review products, you know, they're gonna range from relatively inexpensive things to sometimes really expensive things. Uh, you know, before you have that knee jerk reaction of just commenting that's way overpriced you know it's super inflated it's totally not worth it so think about these things i think it's a lot easier to say well why don't you just make it yourself you know if you have the tools and the know-how already maybe it's you know economical for you but for me it's just just not worth it i would rather uh you know pay jay pay martina at swift pay roland at reload you know, to make these bags so I can help them stay in business and I can get the product I want without investing, you know, 20 hours of my life in, in creating a poor replica. That's what I think. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I'm sure you're typing already. If you enjoy this content, you know, consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon where, hey, added value, you get discounts on some of these bags, man. So that's a great deal right there. And as always, keep the supply side down.